How do we time our coffee extractions? And how do we fit it into our brew recipe? Hang about and I'll tell you all you need to know. G'day everyone, I'm Luke and welcome back to the Artista YouTube channel where we guide you through all things coffee. So you don't miss out on any of our latest videos, hey, make sure you like, subscribe and hit that bell icon and you'll be notified when we put up our latest video. And if you've got a question about this, please leave a comment below, we do love answering them. So today we're talking about time and how we measure that when we extract coffee and the relationship with a brew recipe. So we've talked about brew recipes a lot over our channel and there's other videos you can go and have a look at. So we're really gonna focus down on the time factor because we do get a lot of questions from you and we wanna get some clarity around that for you. So the three parts to a recipe for coffee are our dose, which is how much coffee we're putting into our handle, dry ground, our yield, which is what we get out of the actual liquid into the cup, and then the relationship of how much time is used to extract that coffee. So we're just focusing on that time at the moment. So what do we do here at Artisti? As soon as we press a button on a machine that activates water into the coffee. So for us, we see that as the crucial point that we need to measure. And from there, we go all the way through, for us, about 30 to 32 seconds, when we're dosing 22 and a half grams of coffee. And that will give us our two to one ratio, giving us our 45 grams of liquid in the cup. So depending on the machine you've got, you may have a timer inbuilt with the machine, which is really handy. And as soon as you press a button, that will activate. You can also use your phone and make sure when you hit a button, just push that start timer there and you can start to measure as well. And when you hit your end weight, you could be hitting stop with your hand manually. Or if you've got say a Kaya digital style scale, that will actually start when you um, get liquid into the cup. So that's a little bit different because it's waiting to receive the weight of liquid before it actually starts the timer. So from that point back to when we press a button is what we see as a crucial part of the coffee brewing process. Now, there's a lot of debate about this, but it is what we would like to call pre-infusion. And that is the amount of time that basically water is touching the coffee before it actually starts to uh, enter into your cup. So that amount of time for us is when we have water touching the coffee. And we want to measure that and understand what's actually happening in that time frame. Now, because we have a standard recipe, we've got the standard dose and we're looking for the standard yield, we know that the only change that we're going to have uh, inside this coffee handle is dependent on the grind and also the expansion of the actual coffee. So I'm going to break that up into two things. Grind, we're gonna come back to a second, but I really wanna focus into expansion of coffee. So, as soon as you add water to coffee, it's like a sponge. It's gonna soak it up and actually expand a little bit. And the recipes we always talk about allow you room for that coffee to expand. So, if you're looking at an alternative brew method, um, we, they talk about bloom and we're basically allowing for that bloom that is happening inside the coffee basket. We're allowing there enough gap for the coffee to rise when a bit of water gets in there. Um, and then that can actually start to slow down the extraction. So the fresher your coffee is, the more it's going to expand. The older the coffee is, it won't expand as much. So that can really have an effect on your overall time of extraction. So how do we work this out? Well, I'm gonna show you a couple of little things and we'll run through it. Okay, so let's get our coffee puck ready. Okay, so we want 22 and a half grams. That's actually just a smidge over. Great, we'll take that. Again, consistency in everything that you do your dis distribution, your tamping pressure. We're not talking about that in this video. It's after we've got that all nailed. Now you can see that there is a rim on this basket and we've allowed a lot of room for there to ha have some expansion. So we're gonna lock this in. 
we're gonna hit what we're gonna go for a two to one, which is a double espresso. Now, this is a unit that has um, scales in it, so it's gonna weigh it for us, which is great. And if we look at the timer, we've hit just on before eight seconds before that liquid actually went into the cup. So we can see it's extracting nicely. It was quite dark at the start. We can see that there's a nice, in my mouse tail, you might call it. Now I'm gonna point out one little part here for you. We're at a one to one ratio now. As we keep going, you'll start to see it. There you go, that little wobble. I like everyone to look for that wobble because that's when the coffee bed is actually starting to expand and release any pressure that's actually been happening. And that can speed up your extraction a lot. So if you had to manually look of when you want to stop an extraction and stop your time, I would look for that wobble and then just wait maybe two seconds. And that's gonna give you an amazing extraction. So let's have a little bit look closer at the actual coffee. Now you can see over here, this is what we like to call our sweetness, which is all that really nice dark coffee. We like to call this part here our, our body. And when we get to the end of the extraction, you can see the pale dots starting to happen and also little bubbles. That means the liquid's a lot thinner and it's actually starting to, to splash when it hits the surface. So this is just slightly over extracted over here, but it's pretty good. If you have a look at our recipe up here, our recipe is 22 and a half grams. For a two to one, we're looking at 45 grams. So this is again, an inbuilt scaled machine and it managed to stop it at 45.6 seconds. Sorry. And this actually stopped us at 45.6 grams at 32 seconds. So this is pretty much bang on an exact recipe that we want for our coffee. Now imagine if we didn't have the 0.6 of a gram, we probably wouldn't have that paleness and the bubbles and it would be a spot on beautiful recipe. So what happens when our time is shorter than this? So before I make the next coffee, I wanna show you that we do have pre-infusion put on this machine. So you'll see what this is gonna do. When we press a button, it will actually activate some water for two seconds, turn off for two seconds, and then start again. So we do that because we believe that if we expand the coffee a bit first, it'll help fill any of the little gaps and channels that might be in there. And then when we put our full amount of water onto the coffee bed, we'll get the extraction that we like. So again, people love pure infusion, other people don't, I'll keep that for another video, but I've made the grinder a lot finer and let's have a look and let's see what happens with the next extraction. Now I've gone finer, so we need a bit more time to be able to get the coffee we need. Whoops, a bit too far. So back to 22.5. Again, the same technique all the way through. So last time it was just before eight seconds when the liquid actually started to pour. So I'm expecting it to be a little bit longer. There we go, it was just before nine. Now you can actually see it's a much richer, darker kind of extraction that's happening. It's really quite delicious actually. Now you can see a bit of a wobble happening, but that's not what I'm talking about. When we want to start to identify when we're stopping. This is the wobble here. You can see it's really starting to wobble and get a bit of a corkscrew actually in that liquid. Now, because this machine is aiming for 45 grams, because it runs off the recipe using the scale, it's just kept going to give us the 45 grams. But if you have a look up here, you can see that it took 39 seconds. And we actually got a little bit less coffee. We got 0.4 of a gram less. When we have a look at the actual coffee itself, we can see that there is like these really big bubbles and a lot more paleness in there. So we actually started to over extract the coffee a lot earlier. And that's because we went finer on the grind. So if we go the other way, we go coarser on the grind, I'll show you what happens there. Let's do that right now. One second. I just had a look when I went to take this out and going finer 
and lower dose, you can see that whole shot is lifted right up. It really will move a lot. So that allows that water to get underneath and outside the actual coffee puck. That means that um, the coffee puck's floated up. So be aware, if you do go finer, generally you can't go longer because that will eventually happen at some stage. So I've gone a lot coarser on the grind and I'll show you what happens. Okay, so when we go coarser, essentially we end up with more coffee for the same amount of time in a grinder. Got our 22 and a half grams there. Again, the same distributing of the coffee puck. Okay, so we've got the same time, but if you look at that actual extraction, it came out a lot faster. There was no dripping. Um, basically, the pre-infusion did what it needed to do by expanding the coffee, but the finer grind wasn't there to slow it down. And you can see it's pouring very fast in the whole flow. It's actually quite thick and fat. We got our 45.6 grams of uh, end liquid weight, which is great, but it only took us 24 seconds. So we're actually six seconds slower in brewing our coffee. So that's where I like to point out, pre-infusion actually helps us um, get a longer time and expand the coffee, but it still depends on the grind and the size that you're using, which will give you the end result. So have a look here. We don't have as much, um, we've got a few little bubbles on there essentially, so we still did over extract this coffee, but it's gonna taste very different to our baseline coffee. Essentially, we brewed it for six seconds less. So let's take a look at the coarse grind. You can see here it has really expanded and it does look a little bit grainy there as well. And it's, it's definitely a little bit firmer, but it's not floating like the fine grind. Okay, so that's um, pretty typical of a coarser grind of coffee. It's still expanding, but it's not gonna float. So, how does this all, all come back together? Well, we want to measure our pre-infusion time because as you could see, whether it was fine, it was spot on or too coarse, it was pretty much dropping around the eight seconds from when we pressed a button. But from that point onwards, the time was changing because of the grind. So that's where we look at it and think, okay, there's a bloom happening, getting rid of the channeling, and we're working with the perfect aged coffee. Again, for us, it's about 10 days. But if you start to measure the time from when you press a button to when the liquid comes out, and it starts to go really short, it would typically mean that is an older coffee and it's not expanding. If you find that that time, let's say we're measuring eight seconds, if you're using a coffee and it's starting to hit 10 or 12 seconds, it might not necessarily be your grind. It could actually be that the coffee is one or two days old. So check that batch date and see if you can age that coffee a little bit and do the test in a couple more days. So hopefully that helps you guys understand why we actually measure our uh, pre-infusion and how time fits into the brew recipe of dose and yield. I'd love to hear how you guys are going with all this. Leave the comments below. Thanks very much for watching. Have an awesome day.